so we just made it back down to Clayton for the second time. We are at 127 miles. About to head back up and meet Steve so he can do the last one with me because I am smoked. Besides the pool of blood on my sit bones and my calves peeling from my legs, I'd say things are going pretty great. So, whoo, I can't wait for this day to be over. <laughs> Oh. Well, we did it. 200 miles. I'm not doing Raleigh to Boone this year. There's too many factors. Um, there's the leaves changing. There's the time change. And there's a lot of stuff to get. Like, it just didn't line up. So this year I was like, okay, I'm just going to do over 200 instead of doing the Raleigh to Boone. And we did it. We did it on the noose. I'm so tired of riding on the noose. It's so pretty, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> the past few months, I've ridden the noose so many times, and I just don't want to do it. So, on Saturday, we woke up at 3.30, I think. I think it was 3.30. I missed the first alarm at 3.15, so I was kind of more rushed to get ready. Well, we are out here again at the butt crack of dawn it's like 4 45 right now it's pretty chilly i left the house i had to turn around and go get some more clothes so it's going to be awful to keep up with but it's super dark out pitch black going on the noose because i'm not doing rally to boone we're doing 200 on the noose we're going to call it noose trace leches so stay tuned we'll get some clips of the ride and then i'll talk to you about why i didn't do rally to boone here we go into the darkness. But I left the house. I had oatmeal, bananas for breakfast, packed all my stuff on the Fuji. I left, did one loop through the neighborhood to go connect to the Greenway to then connect to the noose. And I had to turn around to get warmer clothes because it was freezing. I think the Garmin said the low was 39 that day. So really cold. But then that was awful because I had all these clothes that I had to keep shedding because I think it got up to like 69 or 71 or something. So I had to carry around this clothes. I'll try to reflect the light so you can see my face. It is cold this morning. I have a killer headache right now just because the light and the helmet and everything is so tight on my head. But uh, yeah, it's cold. It's pretty cool. It's super clear out right now. But we're about 30 miles in and time to head back or I guess not back, but it's time to head down to Clayton. Oh, it's so cold. I'm going to get readjusted here on my headlights so my head will stop hurting. But yeah. Oh man, I'm so tired. Here we go. 200. Had the headlamp this time. Had the light on the Garmin on the bike too. And we were just watching to see if any deer or anything was going to come and just run in front of me so I could kind of protect myself. I saw deer constantly going to the noose and then once I got on the noose I didn't really see anything but on Crabtree Creek Trail so many deer so many deer so that was kind of cool and kind of eerie at the same time if you've never ridden in the dark personally I like it it's really fun but it's kind of scary too so it just gets the heart racing so it's awesome All right, so it's still cold. We already changed some layers around, removed the headlight and stuff. So still on the way down to Clayton, but the sun is rising. So that is good news. So now back on the bike. And you get to see the sunrise and see just nature come alive. And that is always just a blessing to see. So I'm super thankful for that. Ultimately, I'm very thankful for everything being safe the whole time. So praise be to God for keeping me safe. Ooh, well, it's pretty cool to wake up with the world. My face is a little numb from all the wind. But yeah, so just getting a picture of the bike, getting a picture of nature. It's gorgeous this morning. Just, just real cold, as I've said. So here we go. And ultimately having fun, <laughs> what I classify as fun is suffering, but whatever. It was fun. Yeah, so I rode. It was really cold. I rode solo for the first 138 miles, and from mile 70 to mile 100, 
I had a terrible mental block and it really just, it wore me down so much. I, I don't know. I don't even know why. I was just so bored. I kept eating. My nutrition was fine, but I was just so mentally bored. But the only way you get through those is just to keep pedaling and it doesn't have to be fast. You don't have to keep looking at the Garmin to see if you're going the right speed or anything. You just kind of have to tune everything out and just keep pedaling. And that's what I did and I finally broke through that wall. And so then I went through the next, yeah, 38 miles or so. Solo, I was moving fairly slow, I think like 13 or 14 miles an hour. And I was starting to feel it in my legs and stuff. But then Steve, one of my buddies came and he joined me and we rode back to Anderson Point Park. And then that finished lap two and then we went back up the noose and then back down to Clayton and then back to finish loop three, which ultimately put me at 205.32. And that was huge. Just having someone there to talk to, it just lifted my spirits. It lifted my speed too. I mean, he led most of the way. So I was kind of able to just not push as much power. And that was just a huge lifesaver. So thank you to Steve. It was terrible because I woke up pitch black outside, I got done riding, and it was pitch black outside. I was on the bike for like over 15 hours, but I think moving time was a little over 13. But yeah, it was tough. It was really tough, but now that I did it, all those other rides, I'm like, they're all good rides. They're, as long as you go out and you come back safely, it's a good ride. It might be a really hard, really difficult ride, but it is a good ride, so I cannot complain. It was a great ride. My nutrition was fantastic. Shout out to Elizabeth Jordan for giving me the recommendation of taking real food. That really got me over the hump. Let's see what else I can say. Another thing is I put on the aero bars so I could just keep changing up my position so I wouldn't just get accustomed to one and make that a super painful position. So, I mean, my back really didn't start hurting until about like mile 180 or something with only 20 miles left. And I was talking to Steve and Steve was like, oh, that's really impressive. And I was like, is it? Because it could just mean I just slouch all the time and I have horrible position or like horrible posture. So if that's great, awesome. If not, and I have horrible posture, then I don't know what to do about it. I gotta start doing yoga and start focusing on my core and all that. But yeah, it was, the thing that bothered me the most were my feet. The constant pressure of the pedal and pushing and pulling, the pushing really got me because on the hills, I pretty much had to stand up after the second lap. I pretty much had to stand up and just dig through every single one, even if it wasn't that much and you could get momentum up it. I had to stand up and really force it because I had so much food on my bike because it was self-supported. I had tubes, CO2, all this stuff in case I get a flat. I had battery packs on my bike because I had to use for my Garmin because my Garmin started to die. So I put, I used that for my Garmin and then I had like an inhaler because your boy's got asthma and then just snacks. And that weighed my bike down a lot. So I really felt that at first of course, as the day went on and I started to use stuff, it went down, but it was still relatively heavy. But yeah, it was it was awesome. I don't want to do it again for a while just because of how long it took. 15 hours just being away from the house on a Saturday when you could just be enjoying the couch and TV and you bike for six hours and then come back home and relax. Not being able to do that was kind of hard but that's the sacrifice doing it this time of the year when it's starting to get darker sooner 
and colder than doing it in the summer when it's hot, humid, and it's more light out. So this was the toss up. That's another reason why I didn't do Boone, but I think it was the right call. Got to stay on the greenway, so relatively safe. There was quite a few people out, but not. it wasn't crazy like it would be in the summer. So I think this is definitely the right call for safety and not having to worry about getting back to Raleigh from Boone and all that. So thanks for checking out this video. Leave me a comment below on what you think. And if you want to do a long ride with me, that would be awesome. More the merrier. Thank you, Steve, again for giving me that final push. And thanks for checking it out.